Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are San Diego. Sunday in San Diego, we salute the military once again, and today the spouses of those in the military. They're here for the final game of this three-game series, the Padres and the Rockies. Padres with a couple of wins, 14 to 3, and then last night by a 4 to 2 score using key base hits. You saw the RBIs, Kemp and Upton and Myers as the Padres pick up a 4 to 2 victory and now are on the positive side of the ledger, a winning record as we welcome you to Petco Park on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Military Sunday brought to you by USAA. It's the Rockies and the Padres game three. And good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sunday. Fun day. Run day, hopefully. Yeah. With uh, Mark Grant, Dick Enberg. Thank you for joining us. The Padres, uh, you know, the point was made in the pregame show by Mark Sweeney. Yeah, they win two, but can they come up with a sweep? That didn't happen often last year. To get a sweep today, you don't want anybody else on the mound other than James Shields. He's pitching great here at Petco Park. His ERA in the short time he's been here is one three eight, and this is a guy who takes charge. I think it's a perfect scenario for San Diego to sweep these rocks. And we'll see a lot of strikeouts with Shields on the mound. He's right up there among the leaders in the National League, 41 already this season. You know, the one thing about James Shields that he was quoted a couple starts ago that he hasn't really had his best stuff. When he's got it going, he can make hitters look absolutely silly. So the 2-0 record, the 2-9 ERA, but look at the punch outs. 41 strikeouts in 31, that is a great ratio. He's not going to walk many hitters. So if he's got that change up, if he's got the fastball spot in it today, a lot of swings and misses possibly for this Colorado Rocky team. But like I said, if you want to sweep the Rockies, James Shields is a good guy to have on the mound today. Five quality starts. He has a 2-0 record and three no decisions. He'd like to get that number on the left side to 3-0 today. Well, the runs, it's a run, run, run San Diego Padre offense, and RBIs are coming from all directions. Everybody in the lineup has really contributed to this ball club, and it's a good job by everybody. If it's 6, 7, 8, if it's top of the order, they're doing a good job. And also, you know, one thing I look at this team is the defense. They're doing a really good job as well. Well, the defense in this series, well, let's just get a taste of it. But first of all, Kemp makes this play, and what does Justin Upton do? I can do you one better. And one thing that this defense does... As Justin Upton lays out, it really gives the Padres pitching staff a lot to smile about because they could say, you know what, look at these plays being played behind me. I just have to keep the ball in the ballpark, and chances are they're going to make the play. Hey, Clint Barmas was plugging a lot of holes last night. A great job at the shortstop position by the veteran. That's in fact, and he got a couple of runs there as well. Well, the Padres have taken the field, and USAA is proud to present the San Diego Padres as they come out and greet those spouses of the military. Well Chris Budden is down at the field level and Chris you have more on today's starter. Yeah, well, James Shields looking for his third win, as you guys said. He's doing it behind an offense that's starting to find its groove in the last two days. 18 runs so far this series. But for James, he says run support or not, it doesn't matter to him. It doesn't play any difference. I mean, we're going to go out there and pitch our game no matter what. Um, you know, we're going to do our, our we're going to try to do our job and just keep the team in the game as long as we can to win, give us a chance to win. Um, you know, the good news is, is that this team showed a lot of character this year so far as w coming back late in games and things like that. So, um, you know, you only can control what you can control. Um, you know, and it's our job to go out there and just uh, just do our job. And, Dick, that just shows you the makeup of the Padres ace, whether it's 8-0 or 0-0, he pitches with all sorts of confidence. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, I talked to Will Middlebrooks, who's uh, in a bit of a slump before the game today, and he said, what a difference from Boston to here. If I were in Boston now, they'd be killing me, and everything would be <laughs> tense in the, in the clubhouse. He said, Bud Black is such a terrific manager, and the group of uh, characters that wear Padre uniforms this year, and I use character in the most positive of ways, uh, just everybody picking up their teammate, and that's uh, the kind of spirit that's going to be fun to be uh, saluting all season long. Let's check the Rockies lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Charlie Blackman had a double and a home run last night in the 4-2 Rockies loss. Then Dickerson, Arenado, Carlos Gonzalez uh, moves into the cleanup spot, although he's in a slump, but he's hit well lifetime against Shields. Michael McHenry, the backup catcher, Padres have trouble getting him out. 
LeMahieu still hitting 400, second best in the National League. Rafael Inoa gives uh, Troy Tulowitzki the afternoon off. Daniel Descalzo over at first base for uh, Justin Morneau and Kyle Kendrick, a good hitter himself on the mound. Oh, Dick, I've got a good feeling this afternoon with James Shields on the mound. The scouting report, he repeats his delivery as good as anybody out there. Therefore, he makes good quality pitches around the plate. And the best is yet to come. I alluded to that in our game open. He feels he really hasn't had his bad stuff. I think something special is going to happen today. Mm. All right, here we go on a beautiful day here in San Diego. Charlie Blackman hitting an even 300. Shields gets us started. First pitch a little inside. Ball one. 92 on the fastball. Blackman. Six of the last seven games. Uh, hitting at a 364 pace to pull his average up to an even 300. And it's 2-0. and oh. Be interesting to see how the ball carries day game. Usually we see more home runs. Padres actually have 23 this year. One more than the Rockies. Uh oh, right off the bat, a high fly ball into that Petco porch corner, and that's gone. Bite my tongue. Blackman circles the bases, and the Rockies jump in front early, one to nothing. Suddenly, the opposition aiming for that short Petco porch, and he dropped one in there that uh, almost anywhere else in the ball yard would not have gone. 2-0, he gets extended up above the belt buckle, and this pitches away, but Charlie Blackman out in front of it and hooks it. James Shields wanted that one down, 2 and 0. Oh. Fifth home run of the season for Charlie Blackman. Looked like a fastball, 2-0 oh there. And that'll bring up Corey Dickerson. Dickerson with excellent power as well. Well, the visitors jumped in front early last night, uh, two to one. Blackman's home run, and the Padres rallied. Yeah. James Shields will have to work from behind. That's only the fifth home run that he's given up this year. You know, if you're giving up a home run per start, I think that's you know pretty average. I think that's pretty decent. If you 33 starts a year, you give up 33 home runs. That's not bad. That lifted foul out of play. They measured the home run at 341 feet. So you consider that in right and left center, it's around 380, 385. That's uh, the short porch homer. They all count. Well, Charlie Blackman going straight incognito. My goodness. The glasses, the eye black, the beard. <laughs> what is it this year? It just gets hairier and hairier. I think that team, you know, now that everyone's going beard and long hair, and you know, maybe one of the teams will go the other way. You know, the, the clean look, yeah. the, the Mark Grant look, the shave, clean, no beard, no hair. Don, what do you think? The prospect look, right? It seems like it's cyclical. You know, back in the '60s, a lot of a lot of big mustaches, right? '70s guys with beards a little bit. And then they cleaned up their act a little bit. Ground ball into right field, and Dickerson follows Blackman's home run with a sharp single. And the Rockies come out with their hitting clothes, and Nolan Arenado will be next. Good direction between second baseman Spanchenberg and Alonso. And with no one out, here's Arenado. Well, it's a pitcher. You make a pitch and hit it on the ground. It's frustrating when they hit that hole. It's going to happen. You try to work for that ground ball again and try to get a double play. Nice Sunday attendance here at Petco Park that'll boost the season total over a half million fans here on May 3rd. Shields with an excellent move. First pitch in there. Arenado, just under 300. The fourth hardest National Leaguer to strike out. He's fanned only six times all season. Able to get him to chase the ball in the dirt. 
Oh and two. That is a big league curveball right there from James Shields. Straight down 12 to 6 off the table. El Toro High School. I'm sure if some of his family and friends from just to the north of Camp Pendleton here for the series to root him on. He chases again, ball in the dirt. A weak at bat for Arenado as Shields has his 42nd strikeout of the season. A check now with the Padres defense. It's brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. In the outfield, Upton and left, Kemp and right, and Myers Patrol Center. Salarte and Alonso at the corners, and Marista Spangenberg, the double play combo, and Norris behind the plate for James Shields. Salarte, who's been all over the infield, hadn't played shortstop yet this year, but he was at first base and second base in this series, and now at third, Spangenberg gets an opportunity to start at second. He's over on the right side along with Amarista as they load up the right side against Carlos Gonzalez in the shift. Cargo, slow start at 198. You see the way the defense is playing. How about the uh, attempted bunt right there with over at third base there. Solarte way off the line. He's playing shortstop right now. He's the only infielder on the left side. There it is. Hey, oh, self-protective bunt. He stepped into it and uh, the ball riding a fastball right in on his knuckles. Looked like a cut fastball. Let's take a look. Oh. Not quite as close as. As yeah. it first appeared, right. but nevertheless, uh, using that bat as a shield. He's five for 11 against Shields and a couple of home runs. Apparently, that influenced Walt Weiss to move him up the batting order, even though he's not been hitting well this first month of the season into the cleanup spot. There's Walt Weiss. Swing and there's that pitch in the dirt and Gonzalez takes the walk. Couple of back to back strikeouts. Arenado and Gonzalez. When a pitcher has a number of pitches in his toolbox, four or five, whatever the case may be, you know, some days one of them is going to be really working. I tell you what, right out of the gate, James Shields has found the feel for old number two, Uncle Charlie. So two gone. Michael McHenry, the catcher, three for four against the Padres up at Coors Field. Ooh, that one hammers off the mask and goes all the way over the screen into the crowd. That's how much action was on that foul tip. Mm. Derek Norris so shaking out the cobwebs. That was a bigger hit than the entire fight last night the so called <laughs> fight of the century they kind of pawed away at each other you know it's interesting you say that because I was talking to Derek Norris in Colorado talking about foul tips off the grill and he came up with an interesting point you know the, the show sports science they have that doctor and they incorporate science with sports and stuff mm -hmm. Derek told me that getting a foul ball like around 100, 105, 110 miles an hour off the grill mm -hmm. for a mask is like taking a right punch from Mike Tyson. Obviously, it's not glove to face, but it's the same type of force. Right. You're talking about a thousand pounds of yeah. force. Yeah. A ball and a strike to McHenry. Dickerson still at first base. He takes good swings, yeah. doesn't he? He hasn't seen the yacker yet, though. Better than giving her a diamond ring for crying out loud. Going home happy. How you doing? Hubba hubba. One and two. Try to get him up the ladder. Now let's see if he counters with the old number two. The hook, the snake, the Uncle Charlie, the Yacker, the 12 to Sixer, the Yellow Hammer. Would you see the snake? Yeah, you go. That snake in there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
swing and a miss strike three after giving up the home run and the single shield settles and punches out Arenado Gonzalez and McKendry one nothing Rockies here come the Padres Will Myers will lead it off. You by Toyota. Will Myers, then Corey Spangenberg and Matt Count. Justin Upton in the cleanup spot. Upton with 18 RBIs, just one ahead of the rest of the pack in that column. Jan Salarte hitting a solid 323 and much higher left handed. How about 388? Then it's Derek Norris, Yonder Alonso, Alexi Amarista below the Mendoza line, and then James Shields, who was two for 12 so far this year. Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota. Kendrick is 30. Grew up in the state of Washington. Played his first eight years in Philadelphia. Signed as a free agent. Sixth start of the year. Fastball, changeup, cutter, curveball, changeup anytime. And he likes to try to dissect that plate by using both sides of the dish. Been a rough go for Kendrick. His last four starts, he's 0 and 3 with an ERA over 11. Eight home runs offered already in just. His five starts. Myers, in fact, homered off him in Colorado. One of his four this year. A run machine. Will Myers leading the entire major leagues with 25. And as Chris Button in the uh, pregame show. Indicated walked only twice all of April and he's walked twice in each of the first two games of this Great, series. Yeah. It's paid off. Two and one. Both walks last night became runs. And one of the two walks on Friday night was a run. So three out of four get on base as a leadoff, and that's a pretty good testimony yeah. of why you need a man that doesn't strike out much, gets on base. You like the hits, but the walks, as the old saying goes, just as good. As a base hit sometimes. And he works the count here to three and one. Yeah, and if he strikes the fear to the opposing pitchers by hitting extra base hits and home runs, then they're going to be a little bit more tentative. And then like Bud Black said, you know, they're not going to want to pitch you. They're going to nitpick before you know it. It's three one. You either get a good pitch to hack at or you take your walk and you set it up for the next guy. Line drive up the middle, but they're shading toward the left side and the play is made by LeMahieu. Wasn't a full shift, but LeMahieu was only about 10 12 feet from the second base bag allowed him to go behind the bag and make the play. One away to Corey Spanchenberg. Nothing you could do there, Will Myers. Good swing, hit the ball well. They just happen to be positioned correctly. Spanchenberg only 25 at bats and has a half dozen hits. That comes out at 240. And the shift on for him. Arenado stays in tight at third. So it's about uh, full 90 feet from the third baseman over to the shortstop. Who's over on the second base side, number three. Oh. 
fouled at the plate. This Banjaberg's reputation is a all fields hitter. The defense seems to be playing into his strength. If he's going to want to try to pull it, then he's asking for trouble. But if he wants to just use the center of the field, get himself some base hits. Now, Arenado way off the line after uh, the first pitch. He was in close on the grass, tighter to the foul line. Looks like he's going to get a fastball here. Tried to go to left field. You can see Kendrick trying to really pound Corey Spangenberg in. He threw a cutter, fouled it off near his feet. Four seamer or two seamer that kind of ran in on him a little bit. Kendrick taking his time. First uh, eight years with the Phils, his record was 74 and 68. He's finding the high altitude of Coors Field troublesome, but he's a home run pitcher anyway. Last year, threw 25 long yeah. balls with Philadelphia. Of course, that's a home run park too. I was just going to say, pitching in Philadelphia and Colorado, good luck. You got to really concentrate on keeping the ball down. I pop up, and that'll float back over the screen and into the lower deck. That gives us a chance to introduce the Colorado Rockies defense. Some new names in the lineup as Wald Weiss has juggled the lineup. The outfield is the same with Dickerson and left Blackman in center and Gonzalez in right, but the infield after Arenado, Enoa for Tulowitzki at shortstop, LeMayu stays at second, Descalzo for Morneau at first, and McHenry behind the plate as uh, he replaces Nick Hundley. You know, you take a look at that defense, one thing is really uh, apparent. No Justin Morneau in the lineup. Pretty good average against James Shields, 320 average. He's got four home runs, but he's not in the lineup today. Expansion work works the count to two and two. And hits it to the left side, but Arenado able to get there in time to throw him out. So Spangenberg tried to beat the shift, but the one man on the left side, Arenado, can cover a lot of ground. A look at the keys to the game, fans, from your San Diego Honda dealers. Hey, one key for today, James Shields, go deep in the game, maybe seven or eight innings, and at the plate. Why not? Why not James Shields hit one out of the yard today? Well, that's the good forecast. And also, score one more run than the Rockies, because it's guaranteed win day if the Padres score one more run at the end of Wait a minute. Wait a game. minute. Can we repeat that again? Yes. Score more. The more score one more <laughs> run than the Rockies, and then you'll win. It's guaranteed you win. Got this that game. happens. You've got it totally sorted out. When are you going to write the book? It's uh, it's in rewrite right now. Matt Kemp, the hitter. Ooh, hey. first pitch right in the back. Interesting. We got that same pitch. That was a breaking, breaking ball. ball. That was. Uh, no intent there to do any damage except to put a man on. There it is. Just didn't break. Yeah. And hit him right in the wall. But that's it. Really thick too. After the contract he signed, yeah. hard to hurt a man with all that money. In it. Right in the buttocks. And Matt does the right thing. You turn into the pitch. Well, that sets the table for Justin Upton. Right. You never turn, you know, your, your front side to the pitcher to try to get out of there. You turn, show them your name and number. That's where you want to take those pitches that are going to hit you. Upton, the club leader, home runs and RBIs, and he's going to add on here. That's way out there, and it's gone. Touch them all. These are the new Padres. A hit batsman and a swing and a two runs of Upton's bat. Boy, that's a lot better than three singles equal one run a year ago, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Oh, my. Two to one, San Diego. Getting Kendrick into the stretch. That ball leaks down and in. We know how short and quick up it is to the baseball. Left center field. Put a notch in that shillelagh. There's the home run reputation of the pitcher Kendrick, and he coughs one up early. That'll bring up Solarte. 
first pitch fastball all over it. Now that'll bring some smiles in that dugout. Seventh home run of the season now for Upton. 20 runs batted in to lead the club. 393 feet it was measured. One and one to Salarte. Pulls it to the right side and Descalzo takes the play himself. But on one swing, the Padres get two runs. Justin Upton, deep left center field, and gives the home team a two to one lead. There, the Padres now lead it two to one here in the top of the second. Corey Spangenberg playing over at second base, and when he joined the 25 man roster on opening day, Buddy Black liked his speed. They liked what he was doing at the plate. Still needs some work on defense, so he was out here earlier this morning working with Buddy and Glenn Hoffman on turning the double play. Right now, Buddy says his defense. He just needs to get used to the pace of play in the big leagues. He's got fast hands. He's got fast feet, but sometimes needs to slow it down. Remember, catch the ball, then throw. Sometimes gets caught up a little bit with the pace here. Yeah, well, that's a good point. You know, you know, Coach John Wooden used to say, "Be quick, but don't hurry." Good call, Professor. Nicely done, Chris Budden. Thank you very much. Lemayhu will hit uh, to lead off the second inning with Kinoa and Descalzo to follow. 400 hitter, number two in the league. It's a lot of balls to right field. That one's going to end up in the crowd. You know, it's so true. Just to elaborate what Chris Budden was reporting and Buddy Black was saying, it's almost like watching a college football game and an NFL football game. The quickness. I mean, it's night and day. It is night and day. That's the way it is, you know, at minor league level, double A the, to the big leagues. It's just a cleaner, crisper, faster game. And how many times do you see uh, an athlete, football, basketball, play baseball, as they go through their rookie time saying, you know, the game is slowing down yeah. for me. I'm, I'm starting to feel it better. I'm not hurrying through the game. Let the game come to you. Well, we missed in the uh, whole process of that fast paced first inning and a couple of runs from Upton. How about the first inning for the Padres? They've now scored 26 runs in the first inning. That's the best in baseball. Yeah, that's their most prolific inning. Get off to that good start. And a 2 1 lead now for Shields. Ground ball left side. Good range by Salarte. Throws him out. And that home run by Upton. It's the eighth two run shot for the Padres this year. Love the two run shot. Love the three run shot. Hey, how about a grand slam? How about a fresca? How about a nice play by Salarte there picking up his pitcher? How about you picking up the check? 
probably not going to happen. <laughs> okay, I'll take the Grand Slam. Good enough. Hey, you're going to have a great time on the road trip. I'm going to miss you. you know, I'm going to miss you too. Me, and, uh, tweet me. Yep. Uh, I'll keep you in the loop. Me. That that just loop me. Yep. <laughs> Here's uh, E Noah hitting 222, switch hitting infielder. Key first point of this inning, a one-two-three inning for James Shields. Popped up right side. Did he lose it? Into the sun. Alonzo seemed to have trouble finding it. And there it is. Two away. For a second there, I think Yonder kind of uh, lost it a little bit. He has the traditional flip town glasses. Corey Spangenberg has the uh, the traditional sunglasses. So, but as soon as that ball was up, Yonder flipped him down. Didn't need the glove to uh, squeeze that one for the out. Daniel Descalzo gets a rare start. He's only three for 27. One of those three hits was a walk-off winner at Coors Field against the Padres. But lifetime against Shields, two for two. James looks like kind of opening up a little bit too quickly with that front side shoulder hip and then hence the, the fastball up and away. Stayed over the rubber nicely. Nice fluid mechanics. Sometimes you just kind of open up too quickly. Happens to the best of them. So the 2 0 pitch. And that misses as well. I love the intensity of this guy, James Shields. And it's just not the days that he's pitching. When he's on the bench, right? Encouraging his teammates, firing them up. Lays in an 89 mile an hour fastball, three and one. He's walked uh, only nine men in his five starts so far. Reared back and gave that fastball a little extra boost. Yeah. We've seen 87 on that cut fastball, and then the straight fastball at 92. Squares up there, and then sometimes that front side will open up a little bit too quickly. But there he's, you know, once you let go of the ball, you're okay. But if you're on line when that ball's in your hand, you're good to go. Fouled away. Just watching that uh, close up replay from the side, James, is this just my focus or I'm way off? It seems like he throws his head yes, he does. a little, you know, quicker than most pitchers. He does. That's a good, that's a good uh, observation. But I think it's, it's almost like, up to this pitch here. We'll probably punch him out. Um, it's almost like once you once you see that target, it doesn't mean you have to keep your eye on that target all the time. You have it in your mind, and you see that target once your head starts going. Even if it comes off a little bit, you'll see a lot of pitchers do that. A lot of pitchers will take their eye because of their mechanics off the target. But they know exactly where they're throwing the baseball. Does that get the body, you know, the head leading as it does. In motion, ground ball to first. Nice move by Alonso to scoop it and take it to the bag. A one, two, three inning for James Shields. Padres lead two to one. Bottom of the second. Derek Norris will lead it off for San Diego.
Norris, Yonder Alonso, Alexi Amarista, the hit for Bud Black's Buff. Kids having a good time out in the sand pit. And their parents uh -oh. enjoying a big league ball game. Oh, there might be some fisticuffs going on there, throwing sand in the face <laughs> of your friend. That ain't going to work. Hey, be nice. Enjoy the day in the sun. How you doing, kitty? Remember the sunscreen. Mr. Parent. <laughs> Norris takes a strike. See, you get a lot of things. You get the coverage of the game. You get little tidbits on, you know, what's happening around San Diego and maybe a, a bit of humor now and then. But most important, you get that sidebar parental yeah. teaching. You know, young people. You know, that are raising their first child. You got to listen to the great telecast. There's no handbook they no. give you at the hospital. But you have to listen. You've got experience. Three children. You know how to do well, it. Well, look at you. Well, six. I guess that counts. Yeah. Hey, how about the Padres adding on here after a quick top of the second for James Shields? Popped up. Back of the plate. Might be a play. No, McHenry runs out of room. I think that's going to be a common theme for this team this year. We've talked about it before how with this lineup. If they find themselves behind, they can bounce back quickly. And with the pitching staff, get them right back in the dugout to add on. Lots of little leaguers with us. They paraded around the field before the game today. Always great to have them with us. Boys in uniform and men in uniform up there in the right field corner. Line drive. There, Anato takes another hit away from the Padres as. Norris stings it hard for the first down. What a glove. Yeah, he lays out to his left, to his right. Good read off the bat. Not afraid to get in front of the ball. Two steps and yep. a dive. Great anticipation. Yonder Alonso. Leading the Padres on base percentage. Uh, there's his batting average, 333, but on base is 411. He has been mighty tough on these Rockies, 11 for 20 this year, and five runs batted in. That's five of his total of nine. Shift is on. Change up, one and one. Bruce Myers talking to today. All right, he's listening Dave in Roberts. on the conversation with Roberts and Bad Kemp there, yeah. yeah. Bud Black, Mark Kotze. You know, Will Myers after the first one of the season, he, he's up there as far as my favorite Padre right now. He's just a wonderful innocence he is, about isn't him. He? He's great. Another ball chopped foul by Alonso, two and two. Those Dodgers won again, and that Jock Peterson is homered in yeah. four straight games. That was Mark Sweeney's surprise at the NL West and, and a good pick in her inside corner. The Dodgers at home, Mark, are 12 and two. That's Padres beat him one out of three, yeah. and against the rest of the opposition, they're 10 and one at home. Meanwhile, the Giants are making a move. They've won seven of their last ten. Thank you, gentlemen. What a great way to say thank you. Uh, I'll tell you. A date the ball yard. Recruits don't uh, make any money. It'd be nice if someone could pick it up. Fly ball to right field and Gonzalez right there. A soft liner. Two away. Amarista, the hitter. Boy, Dick, when you take a look at the standings as Amarista digs in, all the leaders in the divisions in the National League, great home records. Mets 11 and 2 at home. Cardinals 10 and 2 at home. And as you mentioned, Dodgers 12 and 2. Mm -hmm. You got to pile up the wins at home and. If you can play 500 on the road, see you in October.
That's why the disappointing sweep by the Astros here at home against the Padres caught everyone on their heels understandably. It's only a series that yeah. now we know Houston picking on other people too. Now they've won nine in a row. That's their longest winning streak in a, a decade. And Marista who has walked more than any Padre 11 times has the count three and zero. Oh. Pitcher Shields on deck. Right down the middle. The old automatic. Shot to the left side bobbled and quick throw in time. As LeMayu playing over. On the left side of the you know that was the Noah who made the play 6 3. Two to one Padres after two. Let's check on some Major League Baseball storylines. How about that Jose Altuve? What a hitter. 39 hits second in the majors to D. Gordon of Miami. Houston uh, has a one run lead at the moment going for 10 wins in a row. Matt Carpenter terrific lead off 14 doubles leads the way. Tulowitzki is just a couple behind him. And Nelson Cruz the Padres will see the Seattle Mariners slugger when they go north on this road trip four home runs last four games 13 homers already for Cruz he leads the majors also in RBIs with 25 ground ball foul Kyle Kendrick you got to treat him as a ninth hitter in the Rockies lineup he's four for ten with a couple of doubles you know speaking of those Houston Astros Dick and Altuve. 25th game today for the Astros and 39 hits as you said that's unbelievable. 39 hits in 25 games. What, what, what's uh, Bud Black's favorite term hitterish? He's hitterish. He really is. <laughs> Fly ball shallow center Myers has a beat on it. One away. That actually is a nice term. It's it, you're a hitter and it's almost like a, you're feverish. Right. You're hitterish. Yeah. I can see that. I can see where he's going with that term. He looks like a hitter, right? There are certain when, when somebody if you're a baseball fan and says, hey, this guy's a hitter, you, you have a certain image in your head, right? And that, yeah. that being hitterish. Yeah. And that even takes it maybe another step that it's like every day you've got the fever. Mm. And the only prescription is more cowbell. All right, Doctor. <laughs> the old RX. Charlie Blackman. Homered last night. Oh, he stayed Seven. on that fastball, yeah. didn't he? Straight away center field. That one at 409 feet. Today's home run.
much shorter. Into the Petco porch. So his fourth home run gave the Rockies a short lived one nothing lead and then Justin Upton answered with a two run shot at the bottom of the first inning. You saw a shot of him now, 51 years of age, and as a player. He broke in with Oakland and several years, half a dozen years with the A's, and one year with the Marlins, and then he played four seasons with Colorado. Nice pitch, strike three. Blackman caught looking fastball. Fourth the strikeout for Shields. Movement on the fastball, straightening up Charlie Blackman. It looks like a, it might be a four seam, might be a two seam, but it's got movement. You can see Blackman turning into it. He think that's going to be in off the plate. Not the case. Nice pitch by James Shields. Brings up Corey Dickerson, grounded a single through the right side. His first time up. 25-year-old budding power. He's got. Incredible strength out of Macomb, Mississippi. And the first pitch curveball is in there. Using more of the curveball yeah. today, isn't it? Got he? a good feel for it. Showed that in the first inning after the home run. Struck out the side after the home run single. In that first. He's retired eight in a row since Dickerson, Dickerson singled in the first inning. Whoa. That looked like more of a. Uh, Cutter slash slider moving the feet of Corey Dickerson. Pride and joy of Newhall, California, James Shields. Listen, picked until the 16th round by Tampa Bay back in the year 2000. Foul tip. Did you see that pitch? A little cutter, right? The hitter has the illusion like it's going to be middle, middle, end. Then all of a sudden, you make that commitment. You get to the point of no return. It's down by your fists, down by the label. It's an electric pitch. Did you have a cutter? You, you know what? I tried it, Dick, but my problem was I tried to make it too good and worked into a slider, and it messed everything up. That's the key to it. You can't try to make it do too much. Inside two and two. But James, he will use the cutter to lefties, like we just saw, and then to righties, he'll make it a little bigger to where it's in a slider. He's a pitcher that can manipulate that ball in a certain way and be successful with both types. Dickerson reaches. Arenado would be next. Padres lead it here, two-one, top of the third. The Rockies are under 500 for the first time this season. Fouled out of the glove of Norris. Good changeup right there, and that's one of those, one of those plays that a catcher really can't practice. You know, the foul tip. It's going to change the tra trajectory of that baseball, and sometimes it finds the pocket, sometimes it hits the heel. Tough to hang on. You can see Shield slap his side as if to say that should have been my fifth strikeout. Now I got to go back out there. I want to use as few pitches as I can. Back again, two and two. And another foul. That one got Norris. Goodness. Get him off the forearm. He took one on that forearm Friday night. The home plate umpire Scott Barry going out to have a chat with James Shields, giving Derek Norris a little bit of a breather. It's a big league move right there. The old tools of ignorance, you know. The old line was you can't be too smart if you want to get back there yeah. and take all those foul tips. But it is a great position. The only player in baseball that has the entire game in front of him. 
Not part behind him or part to the side of him. He's got the full view. Try three call. Hit that inside corner again for his fifth strikeout. Nine in a row retired by the right header James Shields and the Padres enjoy a 2 1 lead. Shields will get the first at bat against Kyle Kendrick. Then it'll be Myers and Spangenberg. The series storylines. Derek Norris, five for ten. He was just robbed of another hit by Arenado, a line drive. Kept three runs, a couple of doubles. Padres really have been outstanding runners in scoring position. What a contrast from last year. 367 in the series. And look at the Rockies, even though they are high on the season, runners in scoring position. 0 for 11 in the series. Well, the number that really sticks out for me, Derek Norris, Mr. Everything right now, hitting 619 off of lefties. That's the best in Major League Baseball. Stay hot. Shields, two hits and 12 at bats. And the count now, one and one on James. So you think he might tie into one today, huh? I've got that feeling. It's more than a feeling. It's more than a feeling when I hear that old song they used to play. Mm -hmm. oh, the last two pitches have been right there. He knows it too. I think the, the previous pitch he fouled off and got her off the foot and the toe. So you want to be a manager? That's your position if you're Bud yeah. Black. Right there at the corner of the dugout. Got a lot of that one, but not enough as Gonzalez able to go back and make the catch, or rather uh, Dickerson. With a step on the warning path, that carried a long way. Yeah, he hit that one off the end of the bat. You could hear it. It really didn't have that sound like a, a cue ball off a tile floor. Stride, eyes run, it just out in front, just a little bit, and that's all it takes. Gave it a good rise. Yes, he did. He hit that ball farther than uh, Blackman hit his home run earlier. And uh, Blackman planted one in the Petco porch. Down on the end of the bat, just a little bit too much. Will Myers grounded to second, hit the ball hard, but LaMahia was shaded over near second base. This is Colorado, Coors Field. Same combination, Kendrick against Myers, and Myers with that long home run. And did you see that pitch in Colorado? It was a hanging slider. Let's see what Kendrick. Counters with there's a change up. Doesn't mean you can't throw him a slider. You just have to locate it better than the one previous thrown in Colorado. 
Padres are hitting the ball on the nose, but uh, only Upton's home run, the sole hit. Norris lined out, Alonso a liner to right, Amrys to hit the ball hard to short, Shields just uh, a long out to left. Slow curveball hangs inside. The foul. Twenty five runs in twenty five games incredible for Will Myers leading Trout Carpenter Donaldson and Gonzalez for the most runs in the majors. Well you can really tell this offseason when Will Myers came to San Diego and we got to know him a little bit and what his. M.O. Was to do this year and make a difference and I tell you what doing that at the leadoff spot. He's taking charge doing a fine job. Well, the movement of players around the major leagues, nothing is for certain anymore. It's not like in the old days where you rooted for the same team maybe for 10 years without a change. I have a good feeling that Myers is going to be a San Diegan for a long time. And a so. very popular one. Good eye again. Three and two. 14 three ball counts last night by Rocky Pitchers and. Uh, Padres are being much more patient working the count. Sharply hit, but right there is Inoa. Look him hustle up the line, made it a close play. Another hard hit ball, but right to a glove. Hey, tune in Tuesday at Fox Sports San Diego. Can I start again? Take Let's two. Do, take two. Tune in Tuesday on Fox Sports San Diego. Catch a new episode of SD Live. It's a great show. This week, Yonder Alonso and Odrisimer de Spagna, they're going to stop by the studio. Find out how these two are connected. It's a great story. And this story goes beyond being teammates. SD Live Tuesday after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. Couple of Cuban born. Yonder's into that fingernail thing, isn't he? Round ball to the first baseman. Easy chance there on a couple of hops to Scalzo and Spanchenberg retired. A quick inning for Kendrick. One, two, three, go the Padres.
Marine Corps hymn, the Marine recruits, stand standing and rhythmically applauding, gives you chills. These military Sundays are special. You know, that alone, that moment alone, worth the price of admission. Yeah, absolutely. And it's great to see the opposition. It's great to see the Padres. We saw Dave Roberts. The umpires. Uh-oh, that ball's going to tie up the game as Arenado drives one deep to left field. His second home run of the series, his fifth of the season, and it's a 2-2 tie. No doubt about that. So home runs by Blackman and Arenado. Solo shots off Shields. In this 2 2 time. Well, it looked like a changeup. 1 0 changeup. Arenado's got a good eye on it. Foot is down. Boy, looking to keep that head down, right to, down to the barrel of the bat. Palm is up. Roll it over. Extension. Didn't nice. Blackman hit a changeup too? Nice drive. Run? Maybe that was a fast one. Yeah, I think you're right, Dave. A 2 0 fastball off the bat of Blackman. So Gonzalez up. He struck out the first time. Well, Mark Sweeney down by the Padre dugout. First of all, welcome back. Glad to have you. And, Thank you. And um, nice swing on that changeup. What was your assessment of that swing from Nolan Arenado? You know, I think you're you're amazed at a young player that can sit on pitches. And when you have a changeup like James Shields, you're going to take some opportunities and sit on that pitch. Especially, you see that elevated changeup a lot easier to make adjustments with. That's the fifth home run the Rockies have hit in this three-game series. And fortunately for the Padres, all five have been solo shots. Gonzalez struck out swinging. Lines this one to center, a dying liner. Well, that's just the same pattern in the first inning. Blackman homered and Dickerson followed with a single. Now Arenado is led off with a home run and Gonzalez follows with a base hit. Throws the cutter a lot to left handers and once in a while when they're elevated that's what will happen you avoid the sweet spot down by the handle takes the sting out of that bat and dumps one in for a single. Here's the catcher McHenry. 30 year old who has battled his way through the minor leagues kept his patience and his dream alive and doing a good job for the Rockies as their backup receiver. Middle Tennessee State. His university. McCunley uh, not in the starting lineup, though a hot hitter. Nine game hitting streak for the former Padre. Hundley with a nice run going, hitting 406 in the last nine games. Infield looking for a double, cha a double play chance. Yeah, no stolen bases this year for Carlos Gonzalez. Not really that long of a lead, so James Shields can really concentrate on making a good pitch here. Line drive, fair ball into the corner. McHenry continues to hit the Padres. Gonzalez galloping around third. He's going to score. Here comes the relay, no throw. And the Rockies take the lead, three to two. And a sharp double to left off the bat of Michael McHenry. One run, single, double. Oh, another 1 0 pitch. The home run to Arenado was an 1 0 changeup. This pitch looks like it leaks middle, middle in, and pulled by McHenry. So the Rocky hitters taking advantage as the pitch is elevated in the strike zone. Still no one out, and McHenry at second base. He's now four for seven against Shields. Amarista looks the runner back, and there's one away. Six three on LeMahieu. To bring up Inoa. Padres after the game today, head on a road trip, They'll fly up to San Francisco tonight and open a three game series against the Giants tomorrow night, 6 30. Our TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego tomorrow night, Tyson Ross against Madison Bumgarner. Tuesday night, it'll be Kastner and Vogel song. Day game on Wednesday, a noon start here on Fox Sports San Diego. Kennedy 
will duel young Chris Heston, who is two and two. Off speed, misses away. Foul the first base did Inoa his first at bat. So far, so good for the Padres with Rockies in scoring position in the series. 0 for 11. Another play for Amarista. Two away. Well, for all Padres home games, military and their families receive special pricing. All Padre tickets through verification by Government X, 25% off all tickets all season long and 50% off on all Sunday military appreciation day. So for more info and tickets at Padres.com slash military and join in, especially you veterans, take advantage. And Mark Sweeney down by the dugout there, that ovation for the Marine recruits down there in the crowd, that had to be a special feeling for you, huh? Every single day and every time we get that opportunity to thank them, Mark, we always we always try to do as much as we can as players. You represent them with the camo uniforms, but also we have the camo ties, which we are privileged to wear as well. But it never gets old. Like Dick said, it's, it's one of those special moments that you see everyone stopping and, and putting praise to where it should be. Special logo incorporating the U.S. Navy insignia with the SD. Descalzo takes in the dirt. He grounded to first his initial at bat. So with the three runs today, Colorado has scored eight runs in the series, five of them on solo home runs. If you're going to give up the long ones, the solo shots are the ones to give up, right? Absolutely. We've, that's the old adage in this game of baseball. Popped up into foul territory. Long run. Solarde gets there. Oh, oh my! Didn't think he had the legs to make the play. It was directly between the catcher and the third baseman. Not the fastest Padre, but what an effort! Clutch the final out here in the fourth. The Rockies, however, do get a pair and lead it. Three to two. USAA official military appreciation partner of the San Diego Padres by Petco what we feed them matters by Jerome's furniture where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day no phony sales just pure value and by RCP block and brick by RCP block and brick yes yeah, start your art or project at rcblock.com Three two as the Rockies take 
the lead with a couple of runs in the top half of this fourth inning. The Padres bring up the heavy hitters in their home half of the fourth. Kemp, Upton, and Salarte. Kemp hit by pitch the first time. Came home on Justin Upton's long home run to left center. Kyle Kendrick settling down since that Upton home run, retiring the last seven straight. Shift on. Out of play. You know, guys, so many times you look at the identity as a club, and especially this offense for the San Diego Padres. You see the first inning, the home run by Blackman, and then answering back with Justin Upton's home run. Just like now, that's the identity that you want to create as an offense. Try to answer back as much as possible. And to dovetail off that, Mark Sweeney, it seems like every inning the, the Padres have a chance with those hitters coming up the plate to put a charge into one, right? It's just that one certain part of that lineup. In the dirt. Can't put and bite. One and two. So many times, Mark, uh, on that, you, you think about the fear factor that this middle of the lineup has, and now adding length to it. You see Yonder Alonso who is swinging the bat very well and he's deeper in the lineup. Mm -hmm. So that really tells you the opportunities you have to score runs and they are scoring runs. The fear factor lineup I like it. Over but low two and two. Yes sir scoring runs 125 counting the two today. Number one in the National League. Almost five runs per game. That'll win you a lot of ball games. Oh, hey, 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 hey. oh, that one right up into the chest. And here comes Kendrick saying that hit the bat. And let's see what the call is. Apparently, it didn't hit. Kemp. I I think Kendrick may be uh, arguing that that was a swing. It uh, hit the knob. It looked like, but part of the uh, wasn't a swing. Yeah, but it did hit the knob of the bat. It did. So that, and they're giving uh, Kemp first base. He may have pinched the pinky. You know, that's such a delicate call, game, yeah. You know, yeah, it is. Kemp not real happy about the direction of the pitch, however. That was pretty close to hitting him right in the right chest. So the second time in a row he's been hit by a pitch. Tommy Runnels, the bench coach for the Rockies, on the horn. Well, the leadoff man on here in the fourth. That isn't what Walt Weiss expected there. It wants him to pitch to him. Cost him the last time as Upton followed with a home run. Let's see what Justin has in mind here. In his career hitting against Kendrick. Off speed, ball one. Here's Upton's 393 foot shot to left center. First inning after Camp had been hit by a pitch. Kendrick wanted that ball down and away. It leaked down and in because McHenry was set up away. As he is now. Yes. There goes Kemp. Here comes the throw by McHenry. Not even close. That's the fifth steal of the season for Matt Kemp. Leads the club. That's one way to punish the oh. pitcher when they hit you. What a, a great jump by Matt Kemp. As soon, as soon as that leg came up, he was off and running. No chance, not even close. So base hit ties it up for the Padres. Upton saw Kemp going, took the pitch. It was a strike. One and one. Outside. Yeah, he, he wants no part, Kendrick Gettys, of the inside part of the plate for a strike or center of the plate. 
You know, guys, you think about Matt Kemp and why he would steal in that situation, especially with Justin Upton behind him. You look at Salarte, the on-deck circle. He has been very successful in RBI situations. Why not push, push the envelope with the stolen base? Another deep drive to center field. Back, back, and off the wall. Kemp had to hold, didn't know whether or not that ball was going to go all the way, and so he only makes it to third on a 396-foot double. Justin Upton. Home run double, and he just missed a home run. Blackman may have taken it out of the ballpark. Once again, another mistake down the middle of the plate, going to the center of the diamond. Now, everybody has to hold their breath and see what Charlie Blackman is going to do. Boy, that came very close to the play Will Myers earlier in the homestand where the ball went off his glove the top of the wall in a home run. That ball hit the top of the wall but came back into the yard. Just inches shy of back to back home runs. So second and third. And no one out for Jan Salarte. So are they grounded to first base his first time the infield is going to play back. They'll give up a time run for an out. I'll be quite honest with you. I thought that ball was going to get out of here. I thought that ball off the bat. was a home run. So the Padres runner in scoring position another hit they're batting over 400. Runners in scoring position in this series. 13 for 31. In the dirt. There's a chance for Solarte, who has quietly been creeping up the RBI ladder with 16 now on the season. A chance for a couple more here. Boy, Upton has put on a couple of big man swings, yeah. hasn't he? Hey, and it doesn't stop at Solarte. Look who's waiting on deck, Derek Norris. Nobody out. Yeah, and guys, great situation to sit on a breaking ball in this situation with second and third with a base open. Sharply hit the second. LeMahieu will go to first for the out. As Kemp scores, it's tied at three. Solarte's 17th RBI. And that moves up and over to third. The go ahead score with one out. Mark Sweeney, I look at that at bat by Jan Hervis Solarte, and it, it, it boils down to him not trying to do too much. He saw the infield back. It was an elevated pitch, looked like a fastball. Just put a good swing on it to the right side. Matt Kemp goes. He didn't overswing. He got on top of it, pulled it. To your point, Mark, you, you look for something elevate that you can pull, and that's exactly what he did. He had to do. Two things with the infield back, you get that RBI, but you also get him over. Great piece of hitting by Salarte. And there's Norris. He ties into one. Back, back, touch them all. Number two for Derek Norris. He takes the grand tour. And the Padres have jumped back in the lead five to three. Another comeback effort by San Diego. First pitch to Seamer, middle in. Derek Norris sees that pitch, thinking one thing lean on me. That's a good looking sound. Good sound right there. And just like that, Padres back up on top. Wow. Norris's 13th extra base hit. He's in the top eight in the major leagues in extra base hits. And with runners in scoring position, phenomenal. 12 for 22, a 545 average for the Padre catcher. Alonzo, the hitter. And he lines one to left field for a base hit. Over to cut it off as Dickerson bobbles. Alonzo puts on the brakes as Dickerson gets it in. So in the inning, 
The death knell for Kendrick is hitting the leadoff hitter. He's done that in two innings, and the Padres have made him pay for it. Mark Sweeney mentioned earlier, Yonder Alonso swinging that bat a lot better, taking that ball the other way nicely, huh? A lot of success against left-handed pitching, and you can see it transfers over. When you have that proper approach going the other way, that is exactly what his swing indicates. That's what he has to stick with, because that is his strength. The Padres have got the Shillelis out this afternoon. In the inning, after Kemp was hit by a pitch, he stole second. Upton just missed a home run, the double off the center field wall. Solarde tied the game on his ground out to second, and Norris followed with a two run shot to left field to get the Padres a 5 3 lead. Now Alonso single and Amarista the batter. Fans are having a good time at Petco. Kind of an early Mother's Day for the military spouses go. coming to the ballpark today. Official Mother's Day next Sunday, but the Padres will be on the road, so happy Mother's Day. Our favorite ladies here today. 382 on the distance for Norris's home run. Amarista hit the ball hard the first time to the shortstop who threw him out. So Kendrick true to form given up the home run ball two more today 10 home runs he's allowed in just six starts actually five and a half so that statistic giving up so many home runs I mean he's not I mean, he's trying to avoid that obviously. Why is it that there are some pitchers, they're fly ball pitchers apparently, that just give up more than other guys? Especially sinker ballers like Kendrick trying to keep it away. If you miss with that, it goes right into the right handed, right handed swing. Fly ball left center, Dickerson calling. I would bet you a dime to donuts, Dick, and I love donuts. That missing with the two seamer for Kendrick, middle, middle, in, and then it gets right to the hot zone of the right handed hitters. Henry may have been hit by Amrist on the follow through on his swing. Let's see here. Comes back around. Catches him right on the wrist. Left wrist. Henry says he's okay. So two outs and James Shields who sent Dickerson to the warning path for his drive back in the third. Fastball strike. Mark Katze ever teaching. You know, it's funny. It looked like you were just boxing. <laughs> yeah, imitating a boxer, right? Shields off the glove of Kendrick. He has time and throws him out. But the Padres with a crooked number in the fourth. After Kemp was hit by a pitch, Upton doubled second and third. And Derek Norris clubs his second home run of the year.
think I lost my hearing from all the cheering in this suite, but I've joined with some special guests, Nico Marco Longo, Marlene Carpata, and they're here with Operation Rebound. You're the program manager, Nico. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do to help out military veterans. Well, you know, the Operation Rebound, the Challenge Athletes Foundation, is set up to support our injured troops and first responders, empower them through sports. So we pay for athletic equipment, competition and training expenses for any sport they want to do. But it's riding bikes for their kids to winning gold at the Paralympics. And Marlene's one of the people that you guys helped out. She was injured serving in Iraq. Now a scuba diver has dove all over the world, also a softball player. How much did this foundation help you in your recovery? This foundation helped me greatly. You know, I, you're not only dealing with just the physical limitations that, that you, you've experienced in combat, but you're also dealing with the uh, mental uh, mental injuries that you deal with war and they help with both you know getting you back out there active and learning to how enjoy life again through those sports and like he says not i didn't have to worry about becoming this pro athlete but i i just uh, got equipment to just go scuba diving recreationally and i play softball recreationally but they made sure it happened and they make sure i stay involved and it's helped me tremendously and enjoy life again awesome what an awesome foundation we thank you guys for all you do it's some of the biggest padre fans in this place right now i was with them in that last inning guys uh, indeed and that challenge athlete foundation is doing not only great work with uh, our veterans and those that have uh, come back from wars with a an injured state but all the way down to a two-year-old they're mm. providing prosthetic devices they have headquarters here in in san diego my wife uh, participates in that challenge athlete foundation ride from san diego to san francisco 600 miles in in six days and she said you know you, you get pretty tired in some of those runs until you look over and there's somebody with no legs and yeah. hand pedaling right by you and you get pretty inspired they're doing fabulous work congratulations Bunt try, no chance to throw for Solarte as Blackman has a home run and then a bunt single. After Kendrick struck out for the sixth punch out for Shields. You know, that's not a bad idea by Charlie Blackman after the pitcher striking out top of the order. Colorado Rockies need base runners. Sets it up for Dickerson and Arenado. Dickerson has singled to right and took a third strike. Padres come back with three runs in the bottom of the fourth inning after Colorado had taken a 3 2 lead. And so a 5 3 score as Dickerson digs a foothold. Arenado, who homered the last time, is on deck. There's that quick move. And Blackman able to dive back. So four home runs in the ball game. Solos by Blackman and Arenado of Colorado. A two run and a three run homer. No, a pair of two run homers for the Padres. Ooh, even closer. You know, not only is James Shields so quick with the feet and the hands throwing a dart over there, but majority of the time he is accurate with his throwing over there. And he's just not lollygagging it over there. He's throwing it over there with some authority. Leader in the major leagues in pickoffs the last few years. You can see why Shields for right handed pitcher. Ground ball right side. There's a Spangenberg and the back to first. It's a double play. Beautifully turned. Spangenberg, that pre-game practice pan off. Not only fielding quickly, whipping a throw to Amarista. Amarista back to Alonzo. That's a beautiful 4-6-3 double play. Is going to go to the monitors and uh, talk to New York, see what they thought about the double play. 
whether it's a double play or not, it certainly was a beautiful turn. I mean, a lot happened there, yes. and Spangenberg so far from second base to make that whippy throw over, and Amarista then with the relay. Well, Dick, I think you made a good point because earlier with Chris Budden making that report about Corey Spangenberg paying off right there on that double play. Here's the play at first base. Boy, tough call. You, because the ball hits the dirt, again, for the umpire, tough to read. Yeah. I got safe. On that angle, it does look like it's yeah. safe, doesn't it? His foot was on the bag before the ball hit the back of Yonder Alonso's glove. Takes nothing away from the effort, however. It would have been a remarkable twin killing. Now, depending on the angle you're seeing, yeah. one angle looks as if eh, you could uh, stay with a call, not enough to overturn on the uh, initial call. And then from another angle, it does appear the one hopper not quite into the glove of Alonso when Dickerson hit the first base bang. Guys, you look from Walt Weiss's perspective, why not challenge right now? You got your heart of the order coming up, and this is too close not to challenge. Mm -hmm. If he's safe, then you bring the tying run to the plate and Arenado who homered the last time. And he is safe. So challenge works for Weiss. Decision overruled. And just score that as a fielder's choice. And Dickerson safe. Blackman out 4 6. Arenado steps in, hammered a deep home run 395 feet into the left field seats the last time. And he hits this one hard too. That's deep. And that one is gone, and we have a tie game. Back to back homers by Arenado. First time in the series with a man on base. Number five, and now number six for Arenado. Well, we've been high praise of his terrific defensive work, and the man's becoming a home run threat as well. Looked like a well, there was a cut fastball. Well, once again, Arenado way out in front of it. And the Mark Sweeney down by the dugout. What did you gather from that? From the center field camera, it looked like maybe a cut fastball. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought too. It was a cut fastball trying to work away and off of that barrel, and he just goes out and gets it. Yeah. And a good point by Mark Sweeney on the challenge. If uh, Weiss doesn't go out and challenge and it stays as a double play, Padres are back in the dugout with a 5 3 lead. But the overrule and Arenado punishes Shields. Gonzalez has a single and a strikeout. Off speed, one and one. And we hinted at the fact they game here at Petco, and the ball does carry much better. And so it is five home runs. Line drive hooking and foul into the right field corner. 5-5 five, five tie. Number five, Carlos Gonzalez at the plate. Ten runs, nine of them by way of the home run. Shift on. Spangenberg out in shallow right. Well, I said this a long time ago, but it's not like a you know it's a new revelation or anything, but with the, the better hitters the Padres have, they're going to make this park look smaller, right? Because in previous lineups, the opposition didn't have problem hit home runs. That's right. In the dirt, swung on and missed. Put out at first base 2 3. And Shields and the Padres head to the dugout. Shields not very happy with himself, about to take a bite out of his glove as he gives up the two run home run. To Nolan Arenado, Arenado second of the game.
Padres having a blast a couple of two run homers but the Rockies enjoying the long ball as well with three homers accounting for all of their runs. Four of their five runs, excuse me, the double by McHenry, knocking in a run back in the fourth inning. And once again, special thanks to Andy Haight, photographer for the Padres. Nice little snapshots right there, the, mm -hmm. right? We had that one earlier with yeah. the showed Shields with, the, with the turning the head before releasing the ball. Myers has grounded out twice. Kyle Kendrick back even with the Padres. Rockies five runs, seven hits. Three of the seven home runs. Padres five runs, four hits, a pair of homers. Maybe not be done with the home run statistic for a while. Myers works the count to two and one. Spanchenberg and then Kemp here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Foul ball. Guys, the third time around for the Padres hitters, and yes, they've made some pretty good adjustments, especially on mistakes, but you're looking for that mistake. The ball strike ratio is not very good. So you know there's going to be mistakes made up over the plate and look for that elevated ball so you can hammer it. Now for Shields that allowed only uh, four runs all season. Gives up three today. Two and two now to Myers. Excuse me foul. Padres, along with all the game information provided to the media, also recap all of the minor league games, box scores in the Padres system. And the top Triple A team, of course, in El Paso. Austin Hedges, known for his outstanding defensive ability, is the third best batting average in all the minor leagues for the Padres, hitting 343, the kid from San Juan Capistrano. Swing and a miss, and down goes Myers. You know, that was one of those pitches that Mark Sweeney was just describing. That ball didn't have a lot of movement to it. Middle, middle, and very crushable. First strikeout for Kendrick, and we remind you our closed captioning is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Spangenberg has grounded out twice. Seventieth pitch of the game coming up from the thirty year old right hander Kendrick. And again, the shift employed. Arenado, until there's a strike on Spangenberg, plays at the edge of the grass in case Spangenberg tries a bunt. He does bunt well. A big hole to aim at on that left side. You know, Dick, I wanted to touch on your point with Austin Hedges. Yes, he's doing very well in the minor leagues. He's swinging the bat well, obviously catching very well. And a lot of people are talking about, well, why not bring him up here? Well, Derek Norris has done a really good job, and you don't want to bring your top prospect up to sit on the bench. Very difficult. He has to develop in the minor leagues, and it's so important for him to get the playing time down there. Yeah, excellent point. Thanks, Mark. It won't be long, however, but. Uh, with Derek Norris playing at an all star level so far on this young season. You just can't bring up a young kid and say OK you'll catch one day Norris you'll catch the next day we'll just share the wealth you got it here's your man. Line to left field that's what you're talking about. You have your left field go that way Spangenberg. With that hit Spangenberg has a hit. Nicely done and Mark Sweeney once again you mentioned it get Kendrick up hit it where it's pitched very nice looking swing what do you think I love that swing and every time it's elevated it flattens out he, he relies on that movement especially that late movement 
And when it's elevated, he doesn't get that. And nice piece of hitting by Corey Spangenberg. So with one out, the tying run of, or the tie breaking run aboard for the Padres in this 5 5 deadlock. Matt Kemp, a couple of hits, but there were hits by Kendrick on his body form. And it cost Kendrick as Kemp scored both times. Spangenberg, good speed. And with that good speed, you know that they're throwing the breaking balls to Matt Kemp. Perfect situation yep. for Corey Spangenberg to take a take a base here. Yeah, I say Santa, put him in motion. A modest shift. LeMahieu not quite over on the shortstop side. Big hole there on the right side for Kemp. In the first inning, Kemp hit on a curveball on the wallet. Then he scored on the two run homer by Justin Upton. And then in the fourth inning, hit again on the right on the hand. And then Upton missed, just missed another home run. And finally, uh, Kemp scored on a ground out. Center field not hit that well. Blackman with a catch. And the second out brings up Justin Upton and back to first Spangenberg. Now with two outs, we'll see if Spangenberg gets the steal sign. Tell you what, you guys know I like movies, right? Mark Sweeney, Dick Enberg. If there's a gladiator two, I'd say cast Derek Norris for the lead. <laughs> He'd be perfect. He looks the part, doesn't he? But if you shaved off all that beard and all, I'm not saying he should. He's got a very boyish face. He'd look like he's 18 years old. Exactly. Not this man, Upton. Broad shouldered, broad chested power hitter, a home run and an almost home run. Fouls that away. Well, Derek Norris definitely has won the crowd so far, being a San Diego Padre, no doubt about that. Kid from Kansas. Made the All Star team last year with the Oakland A's. I mean, Buster Posey's on almost automatic with the fans at catcher, but Norris is going to get a lot of votes. They need more than one catcher to go to the All Star game. Kendrick keeping an eye on Spangenberg. Salarte has an RBI ground out. You know, I, I think we should get Chris Budden on the case of why Salarte wears that right pocket out of his britches. Inside, almost nicked up and up and gives Kendrick a stare. It's a pitcher's pitch. He yeah, has the right know, to come in there. And you know, Kendrick has had some difficulty this afternoon with that sinker being up in the zone. That's what the powder hitters want. And once in a while, one's going to get away from him. He's hit four batters already this year, I think. Four or five in 31 innings. Prior to this game, 28. Ooh, hung one there, but it was up above the letters. Yeah, that's at the belt buckle. The two seamer. So two balls and a strike to Upton already with a home run and a double. Solarte protecting Upton should Spangenberg steal then first base open. Thought would be well then you put Upton on. But Solarte's been such a good hitter with men in scoring position. That's uh, playing with fire. Outside target. And this swing going to miss. Just off the. Outside part of the plate. We're even at five here at Petco. Spangenberg at first base with two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning and a 2 2 pitch coming up to Justin Upton. Hey, he's got a step now, very, very close to that back foot. 
He did come off the rubber, but it was very, very close on that spin move by Kendrick. Some pitchers will break that that front knee right there, act like they're going towards the plate. The runner will notice that and kind of shuffle off and keep that back foot close to that rubber. The old balk move. Lays off the pitch outside, full count. So Spanchenberg will be off and running. Let's we'll see if Descalzo plays behind the runner. That's the usual play. Oh, this is where you love the extra base hit, right? With the speed of Spanchenberg. Three and two, two outs. He's off when Kendrick kicks. You split a gap here and watch Spanchenberg run. Center field. This could be the double. Spanchenberg will score easily. Upton to second with another extra base hit. It is six to five, Padres. What a day for Justin Upton. A two run homer and a pair of doubles. Well, if you pick Enberg and pick the stick. You're looking pretty solid right now as Upton goes down against this and you can see where they're playing Blackman on the first base side of second base splits the gap and Corey Spangenberg, you know, he could have stopped in between third and home to 25 jumping jacks and still scored with that speed. Wow. Generating that power to the upper half of that body with those legs and splitting that left field gap. Nice. Yes. Solarte with a chance to pick up Upton with two outs. Again, guys, you see the Padre offense picking up and answering back, but I shake my head on why they would throw Justin Upton a strike there. Upton with his three RBI Sunday, now with 21 to lead the team. You know, 25 is the major league leader. Nelson Cruz of Seattle. There's only four behind him for the major league lead. That would have been a perfect spot for a breaking ball right there, down and away. Low and inside, two and one. A lot of elevated pitches this inning, especially as that pitch count mounts 85 pitches. The Rocky starters have uh, been pummeled of late. The last 11, well, on the season, they're 3 and 8, the starters with a 6 8 8 ERA, and the bullpen not much better, 6 4 6. And now six runs scored by the Padres against Kendrick in four and two thirds. Bounces in and up then will scamper back to second base. Full count now to Salarte. Ground ball RBI back in the fourth. His 17th run batted in. Norris with a couple of RBIs today. He has 16. Salarte 17. Upton with three now at 21. Well, no action in the Rocky bullpen. I'll tell you what, if he walks him right here or hit, you got Derek Norris who's done some serious damage as well. Waiting on deck. All right, three call. Just caught the corner. Second strikeout for Kendrick. But the Padres rally back. Spangenberg a line single with one out and Upton with a 
blistering double to left center field, and San Diego leads it six to five. And in the pregame show, we have our panel of baseball experts give you a little hint on DraftKings players to watch. We'll hear the four they said to watch, and you watch them fail so far. If you Jock Peterson after home runs in four straight games, 0 for 3, three punch outs, you're not going to make any money there. Mike Trout having a tough day in San Francisco. Shields has given up five runs. Maybe it's Daniel Nava against the Yankees later tonight. He's had good success. Against Alex Warren. And if you're a Padres fan, you want to get involved, DraftKings.com and the promo code Friars. Michael McHenry, after striking out in the first, delivered an RBI double in the fourth. It'll be McHenry followed by LeMahieu and Enoa against Shields here in the sixth. Breaking ball in there. 0 and 2. Six runs, six hits for San Diego. Five runs on seven hits for the visitors. Up the ladder. 91 on the fastball. In the dirt, wooden chase. McHenry with that RBI double back in the fourth inning. That was his first run batted in of the entire season. Now we got action. Christian Friedrich, the left hander, up in the Rockies bullpen. Those bats start jumping in the yeah. Padre dugout, seeing a left hander warm up. Another ball well out of the strike zone bounced in and the count from two strikes on McHenry full count. You know I had to double check. I mean I, I knew this but I had to double check just to. Make sure but looking at the stat pack this morning give us all the league leaders and what have you. But the Padres number one in the National League in hits. Hits and runs. Yes. <laughs> oh and now McHenry gets hit. Stepped right into that one. He got hit on the wrist or forearm. That's not what Fields had in mind to hit the leadoff man in a one run game. It looked like a change up grip. Right forearm. That'll bring up DJ LeMahieu. With his 400 batting average, he's grounded out twice today. The 
Vince is building this game as if we were playing at Coors Field, not Petco Park. They take 10 runs to win. Ball one. Dale Thayer starting to loosen. Not a bad time for a hit and run, guys. You think about LeMahieu, how he handles the bat, and a runner in McHenry. And uh, he goes to right field with precision as it is. And Shields is a strike thrower. The inside, 2 and 0. LeMahieu hugs that plate, so trying to back him off a bit because he stands right on that inside line. Able to take that outside pitch to right field. Runner goes. There it is. The throw by Norris he is there in time. Well, it was a hit and run. But once again, Derek Norris nails a runner. He's been fantastic. And it looked like James Shields stayed in. In with a two seamer, it looked like. And Derek Norris, my goodness gracious, with the bat, with the arm, quick release from the ear. Stay on top of it. Don't work underneath it. <laughs> Mask all out of whack. Looks good, though, from down there. Did he get a piece of the bat? Well, Derek is smiling with Todd Hutchison, the trainer. The bat may have gotten him on the foot. See what happened as LeMay Hughes swings uh, and misses on the hit and run. The bat. Oh, talk about bad timing. Mm. And he still throws the runner out. And Mark, if he's in that movie that you were talking about, he's probably going to take a foul tip getting over to the movie <laughs> yeah. theater. In the, the credits. Stage. <laughs> in the credits, they're going to have a foul off the mask and oh, another off the forearm. This guy's unbelievable. You got to have the horse throw him a couple of times. Get back up there and charge on. Another foul by LeMahieu. The count of two and two. Mark Sweeney, I know you're a big Gladiator fan. I am. I mean, I'm not a fan of the foul tips. That's the reason why I wouldn't even try being a catcher in the big leagues. Oh. I was left-handed, and they didn't give me many gloves. But that's the reason why I wouldn't be as a catcher. I have all the respect in the world for catchers. I do, who, too. Uh, it's unbelievable. It really is. Line drive. Boy, that just ate up Amarista. And LeMahieu has a solid single. That's how big that throw out of McHenry was on the hit and run. That ball was smoked like a Christmas ham. First of all, the top spin and that ball hooking. So give us a good look. I mean, you, you get in front of that one, it's cracked sternum. So. Broken cup. Broken nose. Can I go on or no? I'll just leave it at that. Hurtful. Yeah. Inoa fouled out and grounded to short. Switch hitter. In at shortstop today for Tulowitzki. He checks the signs. See if uh, another hit and runs in the work. LeMahieu, a very safe lead at first base. But Shields going to visit anyway. Well, you know, a limited time this year before this game 18 at bats, struck out four times. Has yet to ground into a double play. I take that back. He's grounded into one, one double play this year. Off the plate, outside, two and zero. Oh. 90th pitch coming up for James Shields. has gone over the 100 pitch mark in three of his five starts this year.
the most he's thrown the last time out against Houston 111 pitches. He's the Iron Man. Also on deck, the number eight hitter. Well, Mark Sweeney with the number eight hitter on deck and the pitcher spot coming up. Your thoughts on possibly a pitch hit situation if it gets to that point? Who would you like to see? What would you like maybe see working here for the Well, Rockies? Mark, you know, you think about it too. This is a, a day that you're playing a lot of bench players, and Troy Tulowitzki is on the bench. You got to be worried about these big situations. They look for one at bat. And Justin Morneau there as well. You know, if you're a manager too, you want to take your shot. You want to look for those, and you're going to want to give them. Almost a full day's rest, but you also tell them, listen, if I get into a big situation, I might need you for, to get a big bat. And then, of course, go in and play defense to show up the defense, right, at the shortstop position. There's Justin Morneau. He's so, got the eye black yeah, on. He's, he's ready. Yep. Yeah. Two and two, you know what? Going back to the uh, throw out of McHenry after he was hit by a pitch. You got to credit Shields there as well. He's keeping those runners tight to the bag at first. One less step. Often the difference between out or safe at second. Yeah usually you know it's the left hander that cuts down the running game. But the right hander James Shields he does that. With a good move. Two and two. Sharp single to right field. Charging it as Camp LeMahieu will have to hold it second. All the more important now the throw out of McHenry. Otherwise, the base would be loaded right now. Time for the T-Mobile game changer. Most strikeouts by major league pitchers and uh, James Shields. You can add seven to that total, so he currently has 48, top of the list, and apparently running out of gas because Bud Black making the slow walk out to the mound. Would be the earliest that Shields has been relieved in his seven starts this year. He leaves with two runners on, and the Padres in front by one. We'll see Dale Thayer when we come back. Back comes Derek Norris with a man on, and the Padres regain the lead. Arenado again with a home run to tie it at five. And Upton again, a home run and a pair of doubles drives in the tiebreaker six to five. And that's where we stand, our heroes game summary as Dale Thayer enters the game, his 11th appearance of the season. 
The last time out for Dale was Friday in the eighth inning. It was the top of the order, but inherits a couple base runners here with only one out. Pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Descalzo grounded out and fouled out. That's the most runs that Shields has given up in his seven starts as a Padre. Didn't quite have the velocity that we've seen in the past. To Lewitsky, just in case. The pitcher's spot is next. Two on with one out. Here in the Rockies sixth. And Thayer comes in and throws three pitches out of the strike zone. For the moment, Kendrick is in the on deck circle. Undoubtedly, he'll be lifted for a pinch hitter. Unless Thayer could get a ground ball double play and get out of the inning. Three and one. He lost him. Base is loaded. Trouble spot here in the sixth inning. Full of Rockies are the bases. Only one out. And Tulo tapped on the shoulder and the power hitting shortstop coming up. Guys, you think about this, you see Troy Tulowitzki here, the day game. Typically, these, these guys will not take batting practice on the field on day games, but they have great facilities below where they have the batting cages. They can warm up, they can take enough swings to feel comfortable. But this might be the first swing that Troy Tulowitzki takes all day long. Hitting 302. His home run total below what you might expect here in early May. Just a couple of dingers, 10 runs batted in, but. He's right up there with the league leaders and doubles with 12. It's only two off the National League lead. And the third time that Troy Tulowitzki has been pitch hitting this year, 0 for 2 in the pitch hit category. Popped up, back is short, and Maurice out. Infield fly is called, two away. So Tulowitzki wastes no time, goes after the first pitch. And they're two away. Well, Mark Sweeney alluded, alluded to this a couple days ago, uh, talking about pinch hitters and swinging at the first pitch because you know what? You get that fastball right down middle, middle end, you're going to go on it. But the movement from Dale Thayer gets it right down the label. Tulowitzki working under it, and that is a huge out. And Mark Sweeney pinched it for many, many years. And, uh, Mark, chances are you're going to be first pitch fastball hunting. Correct? I can't tell you how many times that you took a swing at your first pitch, and if you fouled it off, you felt like you were so far behind that ball. But you have to. You have to try to hit that fastball because anything with a wrinkle in it in the timing aspect makes it very difficult. Padres not out of the woods. Here's Blackman. He's had a good day, a home run and a bunt single. The home run to open the ball game. He found the Petco porch. Right down in the corner. And the uh, Rockies had a 1 nothing lead on the first swing of the game. And then he placed a perfect bunt the last time. He's an RBI man, leadoff man. He's got 13. Ground ball to third. Go to third yourself for the force. Salarte beats the runner over, and Thayer does the job. Pitches out of trouble. The Padres still lead it 6 to 5.
Sequan Casino, only 30 minutes from Petco Park. By Jack in the Box, head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blaze and Chicken Sandwich. And by USAA, official military appreciation partner of the San Diego Padres. Well, the Air and Space Museum out at Balboa Park. It's a great visit. Look carefully. You'll see the Colonel's name, Jerry Coleman, there. One of the many great spots to visit in Balboa Park. Oh, yeah. So underused. And when folks come in from out of town, they're always amazed at what a beautiful park it is. Built 100 years ago or dedicated 100 years ago. Part of the uh, California Panama Exposition. A lot of ceremony during the course of the year. Here's Christian Friedrich out of the pen. Well, one time a starter for these Colorado Rockies in his debut as a starter. Take a look, 11 games out of the pen. Fastball, curveball, slider, 83 to 89, not a hard thrower. Closing hitters batting 298. And Derek Norris, who has feasted on southpaw pitching so far this year, gets a look at another. He has lined a third and Sent a two run homer into the left field bleachers. One and one, 76 on that spinner. And before this game, the team, the Padres collectively versus left handers, hitting 303 as a club. Time to make hay. Low and away, two and one. Norris will be followed by Alonso and Amarista, two left handed hitters in the lineup. Healthy turnout here at Petco Park. Season attendance at 484,000 at the start today. The fourth highest in the National League behind LA, St. Louis, and San Francisco. Fastball at 92. Inside, three and one. Dangerous count right here. This is where pitchers will not try to make too good of a pitch. Next thing you know, ball four. Set it up for the next hitter. Ball four. So Norris aboard again. A leadoff walk. That'll bring up Yonder Alonso. Alonso, his average against left handed pitching better than right handed pitching. He's one for two today. And to your point, Dick, that success against left handers is trying to simplify your approach, try to take the ball where it's pitched, and most left handers will try to stay away from. The left handed batters with that slider fastball combination. And his single the last time up, although against the right hander Kendrick, was to the opposite field. Fouls this one away off the roof of the dugout. Almost had a play there, Mark Sweeney. I'm ready. Don't have a glove, but I'm ready. <laughs> the infield set for double play depth. One away, one and one. Coronado well off the line at third. He almost takes the 5.5 hole away. Popped him up, left side. Shortstop Enoa. Whoa, watch out. As that ball came back, he had to do a Dozy Doe around Arenado made the catch. Amarista over two, hard ground ball out to short and a fly ball to left. So he's gone to the opposite field on his two at bats. Jechurko swinging to let it bat. On deck circle. Kevin Quackenbush going over the lineup with Willie Blair in the pottery bullpen.
You know there's so many good seats. In baseball and you can see a different game depending on where you want to be high corner low behind home plate bleachers but those seats out in left center field that look in on the bullpen yeah. those are great seats they really are I mean you're liable to get a home run ball out there you can actually be right behind the, the guys warming up but over to the left center field side yeah. that's no foul. Yeah, those seats right here. Yeah, Greg. that's what I'm talking. That gives you a good perspective. Yeah. You can almost eavesdrop on the conversation. A ball and a strike to the little ninja. Back to first base. Guys, if you look at Alexi Amarista, some of the things that he has to improve on is just that. Just trying to lay down bunts. He's getting more opportunities for starts against right handers. This is a perfect situation. You possibly lay down that bunt, go for that one for four, but when the average starts slipping down, you got to have that weapon in your back pocket. Yeah, 196 before this game. And you're right, Mark, he can. He does have that ability to do just that. Goodness, he squared there with a count one and two. Did he misread the signals from Glenn Hoffman? Not likely that Bud Black would have asked him to yeah. a position player to bunt one and two. Full count. Well, getting away from him a little bit. Not that close, though, after the second look. So three and two. And another foul ball. He swung at ball four there. But protecting. Another great place yeah. to watch the ball game. Strike three call. Follow the Padres all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and much, much more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. You gotta have it if you're a baseball fan. This Walt Weiss goes to the mind. You had a shot of the Kids Fest area, all the fun out there in the park at the park on Sundays, along with Military Sunday salutes. It's a great day to bring the entire family out to Petco Park. Breaking the action, pitching change for Colorado.
home half of the sixth inning. Brooks Brown has come in to pitch with the man at first, two outs, and Jed Jerko about to pinch hit. Hey, every weekday, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1 with highlights, instant analysis, and live look ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around is weekdays at 4 p.m. Pacific on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, our crack TV crew had taken our remote camera down. Those are the seats we're talking about. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. We got these wonderful kids in the marketing department, and you call in, want to buy some tickets, and say, you know, can I come out here, see where I might be sitting? They'll take care of you. Jerko, the pinch hitter, takes high, ball one. Chad is about to hit his first home run of the year, don't you think? Oh, I can smell it. I like the thoughts of that as we take a look at Brooks Brown. Hasn't thrown a home run ball yet this year, Brown. Out of play. Brooks Brown can get it up there in the mid 90s, 92 to 96 in the fastball, as a curveball, slider, and a changeup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Fan for life. There's a fan for life. Maybe a big leaguer someday. Yeah. Got the hair going. I love too. the hairdo. One and one. High fly ball to center field. It's hit well. Blackman going back, and Jerko will touch them all. Oh, how about that? A bomb to center field. That was about 440 feet. Number one for Jed. Good on you. The West Virginia and the Padres two insurance runs lead it eight to five. Hey Jed, you can smile. Go ahead. There you go. One one fastball right down the middle. Yeah, that's when you like to see Jed get extended and crush that mistake. Sending it right back where it came from. And that sound, that's some kind of nice right there. Good for Jed Jerko. Two run shot. Anxious to see how they measure that one. That was not just over the fence, it was into the grassy area that fronts the hitting backdrop. There's some distance between the fence, then that wall in the backdrop. That one landed up in that area. Good call, Professor. Nostradamus. Just had a feeling about Carnac. Jerko. Yeah, had a feeling. Go get Good your lottery feeling. ticket. Go yes. get your lottery ticket. It's time. It's a great call, Professor. Uh, I'm so happy for Jerko. He's just so tough, and he's biting his lip here, wanting to contribute, and that might get him off. And we have another big bat in the lineup going on this road trip. Here's Myers. Two and one. Now guys, you think about how much you grind throughout this game, and for Jed Jerko, constantly taking extra swings and. So many thoughts in your mind and getting those off your back is exactly what happens after that swing. Two feet shy of 440, they measure it. High fly ball to right field. That's playable for Gonzalez. Inning comes to an end, but not before Jed Jerko with a pinch hit two run homer. Another bomb. Each team with three homers today, and the Padres now lead by three.
Marine recruits up there in the right center field. Enjoying a terrific ball game. Plenty of offensive action. Eight to five now the Padres. As the quack taunt and call goes out here at Betco. Kevin Quackenbush takes them on. Well, the Padres eight runs. Six of them on three two run homers. As Upton, Norris, and Jerko as a pinch hitter. The home run for the man on. Quackenbush will face Dickerson, Arenado, and Gonzalez here in the top of the seventh inning. A single, a strikeout, and safe on a fielder's choice. Dickerson. One for 11 in the series after he almost single handedly, he and Arenado beat the Padres two games at Coors Field. Hit three home runs in two games. And they're allowing late umpire Scott Berry for him to back out of the batter's box and uh, go through the routine with the batting gloves. I'm sure uh, Berry saying something to him. 2 and 0. Oh. Stepping out again. Now before too much time goes on, how about a tip of the Padre camp to Dale Thayer coming in, yeah. working out of trouble. Bases loaded, one out. Hey, the last two games, Maurer, Kimbrell, nice job out of the pen on Saturday. On Friday, Quackenbush, Thayer, Vincent, Nick gave up a run in that 14 to 3 rod, but still, they've been throwing the ball well the last few games. In the future big leaguer. <laughs> Bunted foul. Boy, got a lot of wood on that bunch. Yeah. James Shields on one of the many banners that uh, are here at Petco Park and around our great city. He stands to win it, although I'm sure he'll, in the post uh, media conference, admit he just didn't have his greatest stuff, but battled away. Foul back. Five and a third for Shields, five runs, all earned, nine hits. Didn't walk a man, hit one, and struck out seven. Well, one thing is for sure that James Shields is going to go out there and battle and leave it all out there on that hill. He's fun to watch. Okay, the Quackmeister going to work here in the seventh. Foul back. I love that when you call him that. And we're in the midst of the Stanley Cup playoffs as a kid growing up in Michigan following the Detroit Red Wings. They had an outstanding defenseman, Bill Quackenbush, was his name, such an unusual last yeah. name. And another foul. That one sprays up in the upper deck, comes out all the way down into the lower tier. Nice turnout again on this Sunday. Well, the talk around town, not only the entertaining way the Padres are playing in this team that leads the National League in hits and runs, but you know, the new scoreboard, the, there's a buzz, a spirit about coming here, having a good time. Off the fist, just missed that one, and Kemp will track it down. Run away. Our Ram Trucks tools of the trade. We're going to check out Yanhenry Solarte. Reach inside the toolbox, and the ball is up. Solarte at third base. Okay, you got to eye it, right? It's one of those medium fly balls. Derek Norris, no chance, but Solarte diving and catching. Oh, a nice still shot right there by Andy Haight. <laughs> the long arm of the defensive law there at third. Solarte. Nice. Well, Arenado, the last time up, no one was able to catch his drives. Two home runs. Solo shot in the fourth at 395 to left and a two run homer in the fifth inning that tied the game at five. That one went 380 feet. Yeah, some muscle here at Petco. <laughs> Whoa! That was up and in. 
We've had uh, some uh, close shaves here today. Yeah, and you know, you look at that pitch, and, and I'm guessing it's not going to be that close. But once again, you know, when, when you're diving into the plate and you see a pitch coming at you, yeah, the reaction, of course, is going to be like that. Yeah, that that's what had him staggering yeah. out of the batter's box. And he hammers this one way out of here, but foul. Where's that going to land? My goodness. Way up in the third deck. Well, he was out in front of that one. But he is showing his power. Arenado. Here they are, number five, almost 400 feet. And then in the fifth inning, his sixth of the season. Imagine how far these would have gone to Coors Field. Now he chops it to third. Tough play. Solarte can't make it. That was a do or dive. Bare hand and throw. Couldn't come up with it. Infield hit for Arenado. His third hit of the day. He's gone long and he's gone short. Well, when you've got Arenado at the plate, you respect the power, especially on the infield playing back like that. And you know what? Judging by this play here, he did everything correctly. He hits the thumbing of the glove, can't find the handle. That would have been an interesting play because as soon as that ball was touched, I was looking up. And Arenado was still a good, about three strides away. It would have been, would have been close. But the scored an infield hit, of course. So one out to Carlos Gonzalez, a single and a couple of strikeouts facing James Shields. Ball one. He's been scuffling, hitting 202 on the year. Shift is on. He goes the other way, left field, slicing, and it falls foul. Up in a long way from that ball. Yeah, the Rockies. Uh, here in this final game of the series, have lost four in a row. And coming in uh, to this game outscored 39 to 11. Lost the last two in Arizona and the first two here of this series. Given up a lot of runs. Tulowitzki ruining over his one opportunity with the bases loaded, pop up. Is a pinch hitter. Two and one. It's 90 miles an hour, but it just looks so much faster from Quackenbush. It looks like it sneaks up on the hitters, right? They have a difficult time, majority of the time, to really square it up. And we talk about spin rate quite a bit. The more a pitcher spins a ball, the more life it seems to have to it through the zone. It's the, there's no way a ball can gain speed after it leaves the hand. It's just physically impossible. But with that spin rate you get, it gives it that life to it throughout, I guess, you want to say, throughout the hitting zone. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And the, the aerodynamics of this game are, are incredible. You know, they, how you, know, you get the backspin as a home run hitter and the ball carries right. farther. The way the grip and the arm action will create a slider or a cutter or a curveball. What was that? Quick pitch. That was really awkward. I, I, they call it a balk on that because it, it's almost as if Quackenbush got caught in between, wanting to go to first and pitching. That, that was really awkward. Well, Brennan's going to get second base either way, whether a balk or a wild pitch. Here it is. Oh yeah, that's a balk. That's a balk because he see moving. He, he got caught in between. He wasn't sure if he wanted to throw to first or go to the plate. So that moves the Arenado in the scoring position, and now three and two. You know the first it was announced wild pitch, but that's that's got to be changed to a balk because Ted Barrett motioned and pointed to second base, and they just corrected that. This score, official score. So full count to Gonzalez. Swing and a miss, strike three. And he challenged him. Yep. 
I'll tell you what, the one thing this series, and I mentioned it yesterday, Carlos Gonzalez has really had a tough time catching up with a good, firm fastball. And here it is coming right at you. Four-seamer right down the middle, belt high, swung on and missed. Way behind on that one. That'll bring up the right handed hitting catcher Michael McHenry RBI double for his first run batted in of the year in the fourth inning hit by a pitch in the sixth struck out the other time inside corner 90 miles an hour another part of that ball though 90 miles an hour seeming to get on the hitter quickly is the fact that it looks as if it'd be tough for the hitter to pick up the ball from Quackenbush he hides it pretty well yeah that's he? a good thought too absolutely it comes out right by his ear there. He doesn't show you the ball until it's out of his hand. And he's very quick. You're absolutely right. I wouldn't call Quackenbush a short armor, but you're right, Dick. When he comes out of the glove, from that time he comes out of the glove and then releases that ball, it's very quick. It comes right from the back of that tap. He jumps in front of McHenry, two strikes. Arenado there at second with two outs. Foul tip, strike three. Up the strikeout for Quackenbush. And we're at the stretch half of the seventh inning. Again, always a special time here on Military Sunday. Quackenbush powering that fastball through the swing of McHenry and leaving another rocky stranded. As per usual, Sundays, Military Sundays, we God bless America. Before we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game here on Military Sunday, please stand and welcome a Marine Corps spouse, Katrina Pizak, joined by her husband, First Sergeant Brad Pizak. Please sing along as she presents God Bless America.
Yonder Alonso a walk off in a 12 11 scoring fest as Yonder Alonso with a walk off treatment and the Padres 12 to 11 win. <laughs> Wonder. Able to recover from the celebration. The fun just keeps on coming here at Petco Park. Oh, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark. You betcha. High fly ball off the bat of Spangenberg into foul territory. Arenado watches it fall back of the third base dugout. Spangenberg has a single and three trips. He scored a run. Then it'll be Camp and Upton. Against Brooks Brown. Brown uh, gave up the pinch home run to Jerko in the sixth inning. Inside. Well, this is to uh, Bud Black's point. This team is built where they can win the close ones, the low scoring games. Out of play. And that was the story last year. The Padres, you know, you scraped out a 3 2 win or a, maybe a 2 0 win or a low scoring game. Well, this is a team that can win those games, but it can outscore the opposition now, and that's the story of today's game, 8 to 5. Hey, believe me, those wins one year or one run games last year, 2 1 1 0, 3 2, they, they were gut wrench games. I mean, they were. Line drive, center field, but charging and making the play is Blackman. Well struck by Spangenberg for the first down. Here's Matt Kemp. Twice hit by a pitch, twice he scored. And he flied to center the last time. Well, that's a good sign. Yeah. The big man, Joaquin Benoit. Been active for the last uh, three games because of a tired shoulder. Shift on. Kemp started today at 327. Knocking in 17 runs. But only one home run. Oh and two. Okay, Professor, I've got a question for you. You're a ball player. All right. You look at Matt Kemp. He's got the traditional eye black on where they take it's got the tube and you, and you paint it on. Or do you go with the black stickers like Troy Tulowitzki? So do you go stickers or do you go traditional eye black with the like the big uh, chapstick applicator? Okay, I got my answer. Just outside two and two. It would be convenient. And neater to wear the the stickers, right? But I want to be dirty, you know. I well, mean, I wasn't very good. The only way I could play is to get dirty, you know. And I, I don't want to look too clean. You can see Tulowitzki with the stickers on the left. Matt Kemp with the traditional eye black applicator. High fly ball center field. Blackman waiting for it to come down for the second out. Well, here's the deal. I think I would. Have, and Will Myers goes with the traditional. I would probably have to go with the stickers because. You know, when you're sweating and stuff, inadvertently, just without knowing, you'll wipe your face or something, right. and then all of a sudden you've got a, just a, a big yeah. mess. All but it makes you dirtier, I see. Yeah, that's true. And then you got to wipe it on your uniform. That makes you even dirtier. dirtier. And then you dive head first. And then the game begins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs to Justin Upton. A home run and a pair of doubles. Three for three. He scored twice and knocked in three. Just missed a second home run. In the fourth inning, off the top of the wall in center field, a 13-point oh, effort. Edberg. I'm up to 44. It's I'm professor. back in the game. Yes. Upton has brought me back into the game. Unbelievable. And I had him the other night for 11. I've picked him three straight games. So 11, 24, 25 points in three games. Upton has produced. I in the whole month of April. Not that anyone out there cares, but we do it as pick the stick because we put our heart and soul into it. I had. 18 points the whole month of April 
And this man has uh, delivered 25 in just three games. I love Justin Upton. Uh, you were beating yourself up. And you can't do that, Professor. It's a long year. I know, but yeah, I do take these things too seriously. He doesn't have to stop there, Justin. One and two the count. Oops, there's a minus one. Well, you get cocky, and that's what happens. One, two, three. Go the Padres on to the eighth. Eight to five, San Diego. They go for the sweep. Mark Sweeney and Mike Pomeranz working on Padres Live, the post game show, which will be brought to you by Cox Communications. Well, we set it up yesterday, worked out nicely, and today, once again, falls to the bullpen. Yeah, and the bullpen was excellent today. You take a look at Dale Thayer and the big situation. Bases loaded. He gets Troy Tulowitzki to pop up, which was very important. Then the next one is the ground ball, which I thought getting out of that play was huge for the bullpen. Quackenbush comes in. Again, getting those big outs when you need them to try to bridge that gap to the late inning of Craig Kimball. That is very important for the Padres' success. When we see the postgame show, we'll talk about, of course, the pitching and all of this wonderful offense. And you know what? We thought about all these other things to bring you, but in light of what Dick Enberg's been saying, I think what we'll do is a breakdown of Dick's pick-the-stick technique <laughs> as he plows into May with his head of steam. So we'll see you guys after the final out. Oh, man, we're not that short change for good information. Come on, man. It'll be much better than that, so stay tuned. All right, top of the eighth, and that's a good sign. Joaquin Benoit feeling healthy enough that he can come in and pitch the eighth inning. Here's DJ LeMahieu. He's one for three. LeMahieu, one of the better hitters in the National League. In fact, he's second best day hitter. 450 is average in day games, LeMahieu, as you look at Benoit's numbers. And as we mentioned before, Joaquin Benoit was on the shelf for a few days with a quote dead arm. It's good to see him back out there. Bud Black is on the horn with somebody. Yeah, that's interesting. The that, very start of his uh, performance here, Benoit. You know, there's three phones in that dugout for the Padres. The one on the far left when that buddy is on is, in fact, the bullpen phone. One goes to the press box, one goes to the clubhouse. Now they'll keep a keen eye on Benoit. Fly ball center field. That'll chase Myers back deep up to the wall and makes the catch. He still has an as he learns to play center field, turn and get there. Back pedal, back pedal, and right to the wall. The job is done, but <laughs> it wasn't easy. Just that long arm of Myers denying LeMahieu. One away. It's going to be a scary feeling as an outfielder when you keep backpedaling, backpedaling, that ball keeps traveling.
We know a single and three at bats. The official attendance today, 34,197. And that boosts the uh, Padres to 518,000 for their home schedule thus far. Ooh, another one off the mask of Derek Norris. What in the world's going on uh. there? Mother, please, would you tell those other bad guys not to do that? How many times has he been hit today? Four. Oh. The forearm, the toe with the bat, twice into the grill that yeah. I remember. Yeah. Side with a changeup. Time now to check the Cholula flamethrower. Jo Joaquin Benoit, 94 for the right-hander. And you know what that is? What is that? Hot sauce. Yes, sir. Good on almost everything. And there's hey. some good power. Yeah, 94 on the heater. Daniel Descalzo on deck here in the eighth inning. One out, bases empty. The Padres in front, eight to five. Two in the first, three in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the sixth for San Diego. Late swing foul. And if you're just joining us, a lot of good things that have happened today. Even though James Shields not at his sharpest, uh, gets the Padres into the sixth inning. But a big hitting day for Justin Upton, a two run homer and a pair of doubles and three runs batted in. But one of the highlights, pinch hit home run for Jed Jerko. Jerko's first home run of the season with a man on. And that boosted the Padre lead from 6 5 to 8 5 in the sixth inning. And that's where we stand now. Another foul. And speaking of home runs, how about this little nugget? As we speak, right now, the numbers are in. Most home runs by ballparks in Major League Baseball, the top two fields. Minute made at 37 at Petco. No at way. 37. No way. In all of baseball. The park in Houston, Minute made that short left field yeah. home run derby fence. So things have really changed here. Part of it is the dimensions. Part of it is the lineup. There's a ground ball. Nice two hopper to Alonso for the second out. And that gives us a chance to go down to Chris Button. Well, Dick, if you remember Alex Torres, the former Padres reliever, he's now with the Mets. He was the first to wear Major League Baseball's pr protective hat. And they've remodeled it this year. I want to show you. So now instead of an entire hat, it's padding that goes on the hat. He's wearing it with the Mets this year. Still the only one in baseball to wear it. But the idea was that you can still wear a regular hat because the guys complained that it didn't feel like you were wearing a ball cap. And this just adds to the top of it. One other quick note. Last year's hat, that was tested at 95 miles an hour coming back at you. This one at 105. Mm -hmm. Not sure who's testing it, but... Still, Alex Torres is the only one to wear, but this is the prototype that the Padres have. That's interesting. Thank you for that, Chris. And Torres is still the only player to uh, use that device. And he's seen a terrible line drive off a teammate's face, and so he decided that he's going to take that protection. Watch out there, that line drive coming in hot. Off the bat of Descalzo. He has walked and grounded out. And the best defensive play of the game made on his foul ball. It wasn't a high foul pop up. And Solarte sprinting in from third into foul territory and stretching all length that he could find and making a catch right off the grass. One and one. Change up. For Benoit, bottom of the eighth, Solarte leads it off for the Padres.
Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today and see how much you could save. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. On Military Sunday, saluting the spouses of our men and women. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, eight to five. And here's a look at the line score. Eight runs, seven hits, three of the seven home runs for the Padres. Five runs, ten hits, three of the ten hits. Homers for Colorado. Arenado with a pair of them. Upton with a home run and a couple of doubles and three RBIs to lead the attack for San Diego. And we're seeing the Major League debut of Ken Roberts, a left-hander. Solarte, Norris, and Alonso to hit against Roberts, who's 27 years old from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. My memory serves me correctly. That's uh, the city that houses uh, Middle Tennessee State. And Albuquerque, six games. And if you're a left-hander and you can hold the opposition under 400, you got a chance. And Salarte gets into one hitting right-handed and just shy of the left center field fence. Drew Stubbs just in the game makes the catch. A reminder, today's game presented in HD by Sony 4K. As you take a look at Roberts, just checking his numbers, because he was recalled on Saturday as Nick Vincent starts to heat up in the bullpen with Craig Kimbrell. Padres add on here. You probably see Nick. It is a safe situation as we speak. But uh, predominantly a, a reliever in the minor leagues for, for Roberts. And that's something that you really don't see a lot of. Yeah, he started his very first stop at Casper at the lowest level. He had a couple of starts and 14 relief jobs. And then after that, all relief. Defensive change Stubbs into center field with Blackman moving over to right and Gonzalez is out of the game. As we've well documented Norris has just beaten left handed pitching to death so far this year he is. Well over 500 against lefties. It was against right hander Kyle Kendrick however back in the fourth inning that. Norris broke a 3-3 tie. A two-run shot to left. His second home run of the season. Inside two and two. Good series. Six for 11. He's raised his average up to 341. Scored a couple of runs. Knocked in a couple today. Full count. Well, Roberts does not throw hard. He's 88. Relies on a little bit of movement. He's kind of a short strider, but straight over the top. Really high three quarter delivery. Here's a long shot pick by the Rockies in 2010. 25th overall. Fly ball into foul territory, and Descalzo is there for the catch. Two away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres. It can't have to retransmit any form. And the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Kind of the soft read today, huh? Yeah, kind of a um, more mellow. Yeah, kind of the midnight music behind it. <laughs> <laughs> we should make a song out of the disclaimer. There you That'd go. Nice. Yeah, well, we got the lyrics, so we're halfway there. Exactly. <laughs> Alonzo. Soft liner to right, a single to left, and a pop to short. Continues to stay right at that 333 level. Oh, another hit batsman. Boy, that's uh, getting too common today. That's yeah. the third Padre hit. They got Kemp twice. And you shudder a bit when this one hits Alonzo because it was a pitch like this. This oh. one's in the back and not in the uh, arm. That's because good. the wrist uh, took him out of the game. Uh, all of last year, basically. Right, and that one's going to hurt. And, and, and once again, he did the right thing. Matt Kemp turning into it. Alonzo turning, showing name and number. That one is going to hurt. Hit you right around the shoulder blade area. But 
Black is going to come out and check to make sure if Alonzo can continue. Yeah, right in that shoulder blade, and it's okay, he says. Henry, the only Rocky, the catcher, only Rocky that was hit by a pitch uh, today. That was uh, Kane Shields who got him. So Amarista, another swing. He's 0 for 3. Ooh, good breaking ball from Roberts. 88 roughly on the fastball, 75 on the, the bender. Two strikes to count to shift on for Amarista, even. Ground ball up the middle softly. That's LeMayhew ranging. Check that in. Noah from shortstop came over to the second base side to throw him out. San Francisco series begins tomorrow night 630 here on Fox Sports San Diego. Join us as Tyson Ross guns for his second win of the season and he draws the talented lefty of the Giants Madison Bumgarner Bumgarner season two and one thus far tomorrow night 630. That's the matchup Ross and Bumgarner Tuesday at 630. It'll be Kashner against Vogelsong and then on Wednesday noon our TV time Kennedy draws Chris Heston. And here's the flame throwing Craig Kimbrell another save opportunity say it seven saves so far this year and 33 consecutive games Kimbrell has saved. Hey welcome to the jungle. Yeah little Axl Rose going on here at Petco Park. Yeah do it. Yeah. Please please. Yeah Craig Kimbrell will bring the hitters to their knees with that. Fastball about 98 99 and then drop that hammer on him. And as Dick mentioned, seven saves, seven opportunities. He'll face Drew Stubbs, who just entered the game defensively, and then Blackman and Dickerson. Padre changes. Solarte's move from third over to first base. Alonzo comes out, and Middlebrooks moves into the game at third. Hopefully, uh, Alonso not out because uh, that hit by pitch was uh, more serious than we thought. We'll check on that. Post game show will have a report. You know I, I, that's not a bad uh, a bad thought. Dig, you know with uh, the three run lead you've got Kimberl in there, get some treatment possibly for Yonder Alonso. We know that Solarte can do the job over there, and of course defensively over third base, pretty secure with Will Middlebrooks. 97 for the strike. Stubbs came into 
the series. 0 for April. And homered on Friday night his first hit so he's one for 24. Just did Nick that pitch. One and two. And recording a seventh save uh, last night. A couple of strikeouts in a one two three ninth inning. In the last three outings there an inning and inning of, uh, a third of an inning that was that one in Houston when he needed uh, an inning of work and gave up those runs. But last night he was filthy. Out of play. Stay tuned, Padres Live. Mike and Mark standing by with all the news of the day. Post game interviews, scores, insights. Best in baseball, those two. Hands down. No contest. Second to none. Overpowering fastball from Kimball. Well, let's take a look at the keys to the game. We uh, brought you those uh, earlier from the San Diego Honda dealers, and here's the mastermind himself, oh, Mark Grant. Thank you, Professor. Shields go deep in the game and at the plate. Well, James went five and a third, battled, kept him in the game, nine hits, five runs. But he almost hit a home run. He almost did, over two, but you know what, though? It's okay. Score one more run than the Rockies. Well, they have three more. Really? And according to my plan, if they get out of this inning. Yes. Uh oh. It's going to be 8 6 when that one comes down as Blackman has hit his second of the game. Blackman and Arenado both with a two home run game. Charlie Blackman homer to start it in the first inning. And he kisses another here off Kimbrell. Eight to six the score. First pitch fastball at 97. And you know what? When you're when you're hitting against, he missed with location as well. So that's another point. He wanted that one down and away. And Charlie Blackman's got to be looking fastball. The score of the game. One out. Craig Kimbrell wants to get ahead, right? And once in a while you're gonna miss. And you hunt that fastball, you look for it, you get in that one spot. Well, once in a while, you'll, you'll square it up. Very rarely will you square it up against Kimbrell, but he did there. So eight to six as Blackman has hit his fourth and fifth homers of the season here in this game. Two solos. And the man on deck, Aaron Otto, has a couple of home runs. One with a man on. So a four home run game for the Rockies. Padres with three. Late swing, Dickerson. 0 oh and 2. 382 feet. The home run by Blackman. And there's that wicked breaking ball. Tough to be ready for that when oh, you're yeah. geared up for the 98 mile an hour heater. It's just so hard. And that tight break. 12 to 6. Boy, Arizona and the Dodgers today, no score, and they're in the 10th inning. Giants won again, shut out the Angels 5 0. Swing memo strike three. A couple of punch outs. Craig Kimball. Colorado with this 8 6 game. Down to their final out, and here's Arenado. 96 in. Tough to get the bat head out in front when the ball is on the inside part of the plate. Talk about bouncing back after the home run. Craig Kimball just wipes that from the memory bank and goes right after the next guy. Now here's Arenado. Infield hit and a couple of home runs for Nolan Arenado. He fly to center field facing Kimbrell last night. Oh, look at the break on that yeah. knee buckle. And, and going back, how huge is that two run shot off the bat of Jet Jerko? That's the difference in the game now. Last pitch coming at you. Oh, a knee buckler on the outside corner. 
one and one. Little League kids have had a great day today. Lots of scoring. They're looking for that final out. 97 misses wide. Pitcher spot is next. If Arenado safely aboard, we'll see a pinch hitter. Two and one. Three balls in a stroke. Nick Hundley has a bat on deck circle. Nick has had some good games against the Padres and he has a nine game hitting streak going. He made the last out last night, striking out against Kimball of the game. Popped him up. Right field. Kemp. When it lands in his glove, the Padres win it 8 6. They've swept the Rockies. Jed Jerko's two run pinch homer, the difference. Final score Padres 8, Rockies 6. Here's Mike Pomerant. Dick, thanks very much. Hey, first sweep of the year. In fact, first since September of last season. We'll see you just a couple of moments on a postgame show. We're going to talk about Justin Upton Tuesday and what was the secret for that offensive outburst. And you're going to hear from Buddy Black in moments.